All right, so uh, standardized user management with Skim is what this will be about. And uh, I'm Anders Eknert, working for Curity with Jakob and others with uh, standards such as OAuth, OpenID Connect, and uh, of course, the topic of this talk, which is Skim. So, uh, start with the boring part, which is Skim stands for System for Cross-Domain Identity Management and is a standard way of representing users, groups, and anything related. And as well as a standard way or standard methods for acting on this data, which means creating data, querying data, searching, updating, deleting, and so on. So in other words, an API model. And these two parts are up, up, um, are split into two different uh, standards. One for the data, the schema, and one for the protocol. So two different RFCs. All right, so why does standard matter? And uh, I don't know if you remember this. This is from the 1993 blockbuster movie Jurassic Park, uh, where a family or a group of friends, I don't remember, they're chased by, uh, by dinosaurs into a room uh, where they can't lock the doors. The doors are locked by some computer system, so they panic until this little girl says, hey, this is a Unix system. I know this. And she manages to lock the door thanks to the standard. So if it hadn't been for that standard, it would have been an awful movie. OK, so standard, but standards can still be frightening. As you can see on the look of her, she doesn't look too convinced. Uh, complex, over-engineered, and or boring. With Skim, however, all that data is represented as JSON. The protocol is built on REST. And you're probably already handling users, so it's a well-known domain. So there's a pretty good chance that you already know this. Uh, so some notes then. Skim is not meant to replace your existing systems for user management, but rather to act as a standard interface on top of them. And of course, these could be anything from SQL databases, LDAP, no SQL data stores, or existing SOAP or REST APIs. And there's a very few set of requirements that you really need to implement. Uh, so you can pretty much implement, implement the baseline and the feature you need, and scale up as the need arises. Uh, and the SPAS focuses on what's needed for user management. So things on the side, like how do you securely access the system, who can access the system, permissions, and so on, are left to other standards. And a big win. If you have a unified way for user management, the docs are in the spec. Uh, so there is no need to document each system separately. All right. Uh, the schema, aka the data. So in Skim, everything extends from the resource type. And you're probably familiar with uh, these set of attributes, since they're common in pretty much all identity management systems. Uh, so first of, all, first of all, you have an ID which in Skim is a globally unique identifier. So uh, for that reason, it's often a GUID, uh, as long as it's unique throughout the system. And that, that's for any resource you handle. Uh, an external ID, which is an identifier uh, used from the source of where you got this data. Maybe it's uh, an ID from your database, 
a Twitter handle or whatever it can be where you got this user or resource originally. Also, you have some, uh, some common metadata, uh, like I'm sure you're used to as well, like when was the resource created, when was it last modified, and where can I find it? And uh, yeah, all scheme types are identified by the schema. So you know, when you're looking at the document, what am I looking at? In this case, it's a user. And you're free to extend um, your own, you're free to build your own schemas or your own resource types. All right, users, those without faces. This is what comes up on Google. And, and it's for like four pages, just blank faces. There's no, there's nothing there. So I guess it's for you to fill in. Okay, so users as found on the slash users endpoint. So it's both the protocol, remember, and some data. Users are central, of course, to all to any system for uh, user management. And schema is no exception. And the core schema defines a set of attributes that should be common for most users, as well as some not so common. What is the user then? Uh, we already saw some common attributes among resources, like ID, external ID, and so on. So, and some attributes are, of course, common for users, no matter what system. One of them, username. Most users have names. First name, last name, family name, etc. Uh, some means of contact, like phone numbers, email addresses, regular addresses. Uh, some systems also have groups. And you have, can have stuff like preferred locale, time zones, etc. OK, so password is a bit special in Skim, in that it's it's an attribute that's handled, but you can never see a password in when you get a user resource. But you can still you can still query, like give me the user with this username and this password. So you can you can do authentication through Skim, but you can't get a list of passwords or a, or a password for a specific user. And like I mentioned before, some less used attributes, instant messaging handles, etc. The specs even mentioned ICQ, which is, I don't know if anyone remembers. All right. And then there's groups as well. And Google tells us groups are colorful things, so we should probably have them in our APIs as well. Again, groups are found, slash groups endpoint. Makes sense, right? Which, and they're not really needed for user management, but they're pretty common. And uh, so they're included as well. And the group in Skim is pretty much only a name and a list of members. So, and that goes in both ways. So the group lists all the members, and the user, you can list all the groups that they belong to. OK. So the protocol. Pretty familiar as well, I guess, because it's all based on REST. So by sending a post request to the user's endpoint, that will create a new user. If you want to see information on a user, you send a GET to the user's endpoint, or either by providing an ID for a single user, or you, you search for many users. A put request replaces an existing user or resource, patch updates attributes, or delete deletes. So all pretty simple, right? Uh, OK, so, so far so good. Each resource is represented under an endpoint. So far we've seen users and we've seen groups. Uh, a regular GET request to one of those endpoints will list all resources, all the users. But naturally, you want to have some form of 
limit on that, some pagination, some maybe some max number of entries, etc. As you can see, what that looks like up there in the result, which is another nice way, nice thing to have standardized as that's us, and this is often something debated when deciding APIs. So pretty nice thing to have out of the box. And while Skim follows the REST convention with GET requests retrieving stuff, it's not always ideal to show stuff like passwords or personal IDs in, uh, in the URL. And uh, therefore, there's also the option to use the dot .search endpoint from which you can, from where you can post the same data, but use, using post instead of a get. But the request looks pretty much the same. All right, so one of the most powerful features, and as such, one of the most complex, is the ability to send filter queries. This is like, I don't know, like SQL or whatever you're familiar with from before where you can say, OK, show me all users filtered by the username equal to Teddy, or where the email values ends with curity.io. And the last modified is less than 1st of January. Or, or, or where the title is present, or where this and that ends with, or starts with, or contains. So it's, it's a language of its own. And just like I mentioned before, an example of get requests are all up there. Post requests, they look pretty much just the same, except the payload is in the body, except uh, and not in the URL. All right, so uh, uh, kind of a meta thing about Skim is it also defines what you, as an implementer, service provider, supports. Like I said, you can, you can choose yourself what you want to support or what you need to support. And one way to advertise what you do support is through the service provider endpoint. So here, for instance, filtering could be tricky to implement fully. So you can document here what if you do support filtering, you do support patch requests, sorting, e-tags, etc. So it's another nice standard way to, to know that. All right. So after this, I hope this is what you'll say next time you sit down with a skim system. OK, that's it for me. Thank you. Uh, hello. You have time for one question, I think. There's one minute left. Any questions? I see one. Hi. Do you have any examples of clients using the standard? Our clients? Like companies using the... Yeah, uh, yeah there's, there's a lot of open source libraries for, uh, for using schemes. So you don't need to do all of this from scratch, of course. I know IBM back is a backer of Skim. Microsoft, uh, Salesforce are using it for provisioning of their users. Um, it's pretty widespread these days. Yeah, Slack, the chat, you can Slack. query for all users there using Skim. So it's getting there, but it, it needs more support. So that's why, why I'm here. And of course, security supports Skim. Yep. Cool. Thank you, Anders.